I'm Larry Berkelhammer, and I'm here with Dr. Eric Pepper, a world-renowned authority on psychophysiological self-regulation. And Dr. Pepper has written, his, he's written a number of books and a number, has had a number of published scientific papers, uh, has been doing research for 40 years. Uh, yes. <laughs> making me feel old. <laughs> um, his latest book is Fighting Cancer, a non-toxic approach to treatment. I, I was very intrigued by this book and also by your courage in writing this because you really put yourself out there talking about a treatment that seems to have efficacy and yet the conservative medical community, in, at least in North America, seems very opposed to this type of work. At least that's my thinking on it. But I. I would like to hear more about this. Well, thank you. You know, to me, the concept of the book Fighting Cancer, a non-toxic approach to treatment, really is based on having observed the work of, by Robert Gorder, who is the physician and co-author of this book. Mm -hmm. Remember, what is science? Science, in the true sense, is just data. It is, if you have a fact, if it doesn't fit, it's still a fact. And what is so interesting is that Robert Gorder, for example, as, one, as a co-author, when he was a younger, just finished medical school, he had testicular cancer, stage three, stage four. At that point, there was really no medical treatment known what to do. You know, he could do surgery or something, but the outcome would have been very poor. And he knew that. So he decided to do a kind of non-toxic treatment, which included some a mistletoe and some other things he did. And somehow he got better. And I've been intrigued in that concept ever since, or similar patients. How come some people get better? Out of Using this, treatments for which there is no medical that's right. efficacy. And if they get better, it's data, it's real. You cannot throw it out and say, well, I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. It happens. And so when we did the book, the book has really three parts. Part one is an overview in a way of looking at cancer with a little different set of glasses. Meaning, you know, the death rate hasn't changed very much in cancer. So that means that despite our massive prevention attempts, screening attempts, and treatment attempts, it, it hasn't really changed. The death rate is the same. You know, the, the best change in death rate has been stopping smoking. Right. That's one. The second part deals with the Robert Gorda protocol, which I'll talk about in a moment, where he combines ways to mobilize the immune system. And the third part is the part I contributed, which is a self-care piece. What can you do yourself? Mm. So they're combined. The real key is most cancer treatments have been anti, anti. You know, it's just like antidepressants or you try to remove, kill, burn. Antibiotics, or, killing whatever it is that's killing us. That's right. And the reality is a whole other way of looking at this is say cancer in some sense is a failure of the immune system. Because if your immune system is very competent, it will kill the cancer cells. As you are sitting here, your body is producing hundreds of cancer cells. Mm -hmm. However, it's not a problem. Because my immune system is killing them. That's right. So the question then is, are really, one, what can I do to reduce the production of cancer cells? That mm -hmm. can be probably a lot of our environmental carcinogenic agents, yeah. etc. Right. Maybe even lifestyle and others. Mm -hmm. That's one part. That's a major one. We deal with in the self-care. And the second is, what can we do to support our immune system mm -hmm. so it can fight more efficaciously? And there's lots of evidence that's possible. What Robert Gorder did, he combined basically a treatment of, of inducing an artificially high fever for about four hours in, with using infrared. Then it included also a supportive technique where you take the body's own white cells or monocytes from the blood, you, you artificially in the lab you know, manipulate them in a way so they become dendritic cells, so your own cells, you re-inject them. That is a cell that helps, that helps identify cancer cells in and your I body. And I think that second part has been used in this country. Has been used in this country, for example, for, uh, for testicular cancer, or prostate, prostate uh -huh. cancer, I'm sorry, for yeah. prostate cancer. What Robert really did, he was really way before people were doing this, that's one, and he combined both. He used the hyperthermia or increasing the core temperature as a way to increase our, in, activate our immune system. When we, when we get a fever, yeah. our immune system gets activated. Cancer patient, people with cancer as a group have a low core temperature and they don't mount a fever. 
and right, right. they don't have they have a disturbed temperature rhythm so in that sense he is artificially rebuilding for a moment you could say the fever which is then a signal for the body to activate the immune system so it can fight cancer better then he supports that at the same time by self having the person get an inoculation or an injection of their own dendritic cells mm -hmm. which were collected earlier and processed mm. in the lab and then you do other things as well this is similar to uh, coley's toxins where he injected the bacterium in order to create the fever to, and the fever killed the, disease, the other disease they had. Correct. It's, yeah. the, it's based upon that concept. Yeah. Right, right now, this technology, by using more a technological approach, you have better control of, the, of increasing the core temperature. And I think before antibiotics, it was common knowledge that if someone had a fever, you bundled them up in blankets to increase the core temperature. You got it. And the only thing you have to watch out for is you... It means watchful waiting. Mm -hmm. And watchful waiting means you monitor the person very carefully because you don't want to have a fever of 104, 105. That's harmful. Right, but sure. you can want to hold... You can get brain damage. From that's that. right. Yeah. And we now know in more recent research, in fact, that with patients who go to the intensive care unit, that those, and they have, let's say, some form of pneumonias or something like this, that if they have a high fever and you now do a controlled study where half the people get the normal medical aggressive treatment of bringing the fever down, versus the other half, randomly assigned, get watchful waiting. That the watchful waiting group has only one death and the aggressive therapy group gets seven deaths. That really starts suggesting we need to renegotiate what we think about fever. And even for little children, instead of giving Tylenol right away mm -hmm. when they have a fever, you want to say, no. Let the body the mode mobilize its own system. Because really, by having an infection, if we can do watchful waiting, we are really maturing the immune system mm -hmm. so it becomes more competent. And there's some suggestive evidence that patients who have five or six serious fever episodes in their childhood have lower cancer rates as they're older or cancer mm. is delayed. The mm. question we can ask really is not, how come cancer seem to be getting earlier? And it may be that so many of us have had our fever suppressed in childhood, right. so our, we become a little bit less immune competent. At the same time, you could say, we are more exposed to many carcinogenic substances or sure. estrogen-like substances, right. so who knows what the mix is? What is impressive is by using this protocol, that at least a number of patients show remarkable remission and 40 to 60 percent of them their their disease essentially stops and remember these are all stage four cancer patients where people have thrown in the towel now you have to keep in mind that there are many other factors at play mm -hmm. you know robert himself is a survivor mm -hmm. without doing treatment so he knows from the inside out that there is possibility and there are RK studies in here talking about... One after the other. One right after another talking about how hyperthermia does work. Yes, I would say, to, be, to really be honest, it's a combination of hyperthermia, with local hyperthermia, that means local heating, with the dendritic cell, and all the success stories and all the data is based upon people going through at least three cycles. So you need to be alive for at least three months to mm. go three cycles of this treatment once a month approximately mm. to do that it also includes some other things the data is remarkable and i've been truly impressed and if people want to look at it read the book for more or and the book is also a website they can go to where they can have a journalist documentary of many patients who have been followed up mm -hmm. showing remarkable success mm. and the nice part is at worst it doesn't work you haven't and taken a toxic substance that could kill you uh, and, or radiation that can give you a secondary cancer. That's right. And the reason, real reason I started writing this book, because I've known Robert for many years, I had a student in my class. And by the, in my holistic health class at San Francisco State, I teach this large class of 100 people. And by the end of May, an, I saw an older man sitting there. And I sort of went up to him to the break and said, almost, what are you doing? And he said, you know, then the son interrupted me and he said, you know, when Robert Gorda gave a guest lecture the first, second or third week in the semester about this, I called my father because he had pancreatic cancer and he was in horrible pain. 
well diagnosed and there's nothing medicine could do. I talked to my father and my father talked to Robert Gorder and Robert said, well, maybe, we don't know, mm -hmm. but you know, we can try it. It can be, you know, you can try it, we can't promise anything. The man then talked to his physician and the physician basically said, his oncologist, you know, well, we shot our watch. There's nothing we can do. The only thing we can do is give you pain medication, which they were doing already to the right, limits. Right. He already sold his house and he was going to die literally. The prognosis was he would be dead in three months. Now he comes, he sits in class and I meet him. So he tells a story in class, almost like a down mainer. <laughs> you know, very sort of, he went there, he decided, the doctor, because his doctor said, well, what do you have to lose? So he went, he flew to, you know, I don't know how he ever got there with the severe pain he had. He got the treatment and the to, first- In Germany. In Germany, Cologne, Germany. Yeah. The first day after he had the treatment, his pain went away. He walked over to the, to the uh, cathedral. He sat there, he had the treatment. He came back to class and his tumor markers, now that's about three months later, were down to zero, which is mind boggling for when he was basically on death's bed. Right, right. What is interesting, he lived for one more year totally pain-free, without any symptoms. Then his son died. Hmm. And then a month later, he died of a heart attack. I wish there was a better story, but I'm, it was, that really gave me, when he came to class, I'll never forget him standing in front of class, sharing his experience. And I said, you know, there's something in this. And that led to the hmm. book. And hmm. the book is divided really in three parts, like I said, another way to look at cancer, a description of the Gorda process and many things you can do even if you don't have cancer just to mobilize your health ranging from diets from living an evolutionary in your evolutionary perspective mm -hmm. to doing relaxation techniques breathing techniques self-healing visualizations I think those are skills we all should be teaching we really should be teaching the four R's reading writing arithmetic and regeneration regeneration <laughs> well I think anyone who has been told there's nothing more we can do should certainly be looking into this, at least by this book. And anyone who's been given the diagnosis of cancer, even early stage, should certainly take a look at this. And you can do this in conjunction with normal treatment. There's no, it's not one or the other. Holist and holistic approach means you use the best of all. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming on and talking about it. It's your my book. pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. The title is Fighting Cancer, a Non-Toxic Approach to Treatment.